r slash ask reddit what social customs do we need to retire expensive funerals the funeral industry is insane eta my first award thank you yeah dude exactly i don't know about you guys but i'm getting my ashes spread somewhere badass and calling it a day sure cremation ain't cheap either but much better than a stupid casket and funeral service honestly duck it just leave my body in the woods somewhere i'll be done with it that somehow the concept of maturing means you have to give up hobbies that are seen as childish me and my play-doh pasta maker agree i just do custom cakes pretty much get to play with play-doh and get paid for it putting our jobs before our personal lives edit i took the day off work after i posted this because why not edit too just wanted to share this quote each and every one of us has been born into a given historical reality ruled by particular norms and values and managed by a unique economic and political system we take this reality for granted thinking it is natural inevitable and immutable we forget that our world was created by an accidental chain of events and that history shaped not only our technology politics and society but also our thoughts fears and dreams the cold hand of the past emerges from the grave of our ancestors grips us by the neck and directs our gaze towards a single future we have felt that grip from the moment we were born so we assume that it is a natural and inescapable part of who we are therefore we seldom try to shake ourselves free and envision alternative futures you will know a herary setting healthy boundaries is so important especially in a professional relationship we work to live we don't live to work if you have a day off take that day off and enjoy yourself because workplaces will constantly try to take advantage of your time and burn you out one thing i always tell my super disease is that if you're not at your very best both you and our clients will suffer so take your days off and disconnect from work entirely you have a right to do that i want to work wherever you work not talking about salary my job didn't want us talking about salary turns out the guy i was training who they hired had less experience than me and was making about twice my salary and they wonder why i lost my shit in front of everyone and quit on the spot oof sorry dude that's messed up i have this cough but i came to work anyway because i'm so dedicated to my career usually it's more like i vomited this morning and feel like shit but i can't afford to miss even a single day of work or for the slightly more fortunate i am sick but just going to work is less of a hassle than getting an appointment with my doctor to get there and pay for a sick note and then do all of the catching up when i get back to work if you don't want your staff coming in sick believe them when they tell you they're sick making your kids hug kiss people they aren't comfortable with when i was a kid i went to a preschool connected to a church and one day they took us to a nursing home they had a dozen or so seniors lined up sitting in chairs and we were asked to walk down the line and give each one a hug a kiss and a prayer i don't remember exactly how i reacted but i remember refusing to do it and being scolded oh that's icky the customer is always right being used as an excuse to be a ducking a-hole the full phrase is the customer is always right in matters of taste. It's meant to mean that if someone wants to buy a product, you sell them it. Who are you to judge if they are willing to pay for a tartan painted car? Edit. Many people are pointing out that the original term is in fact the customer is always right. Through further research I've found that there is a movement to recoin the phrase to the above to show what the phrase was meant to mean. As many a-hole customers think it's about them dem and I'm zero hour minimum wage workers to bend over and kiss their feet at their command. Today I learned. Being nice to customers that act shitty. Got fired from a bar for doing this. And I'd do it again. You can't talk to me. The gatekeeper of the booze. Like that you stupid ducking dog don't. Edit. Just to explain what happened that night. Worked at a bar for 6 months a couple years ago now. I had quit uni and moved to a ruralish town in northern England for work. From NZ originally, was one of three full time bartenders and was considered one of their better workers. Made friends of everyone etc. One night, closing on my own, tipsy couple comes in one hour from closing. I serve them and move on about cleaning the entire bar so the next guy doesn't have to.
The couple sat at the bar in a spot we called the no-no spot cause we can't see you behind the taps and therefore won't automatically serve you. We were 10 from full closing then the wife says something about expecting auto service. I say yes yeah, sorry, just sick we close in 10 and you'll have to leave 10 minutes after that. She said something snarky about how we're a speed bar etc. They were drunk. I said sorry but I'll keep cleaning and stop serving if you're gonna be rude. The husband sat there drunk and slumping. Slurs out wanker. You tasbat. So all I said was well you ain't getting served then. There's the door. Your name's on the knob. Comma. I'm a big Anthrax fan. Bello is a great bassist. They requested a manager so I got them one who also asked them to leave as well and wrote a note saying if someone calls I did nothing wrong. GM didn't care. Next morning I was gone. As a plus the other staff refused to work unless I was rehired. GM had a nightmare night and asked me back and I refused. Smiling face. All the bars in town are on the same street. GM and bar manager from a 5 star hotel I had met before and wanted to poach me. Offered me a job the day after I was fired. Paid twice as much plus tips and gratuity. Mayo if I ever own or work at a bar. Ima make sure the bartenders are called the gatekeepers of the booze. Having to purchase gifts for extended family that you cannot afford because it is Christmas or another holiday. Oh god yes. Last year because of covid I only saw my parents and it saved me a fortune not buying 20 meaningless gifts for extended family I see once a year. Mandatory gifts for anything. Childbirth. Weddings. Graduation. Etc. I think we would all be so much happier with a 4 day work week and 3 day weekend. A 4 day work week but having Wednesday off is where it's at. I had that schedule in college and having a day off in the middle of the week to rest and or catch up on stuff is great. My current job is 4 tenths. At first I was bummed. Still am to a degree. That I don't have 3 days off in a row. But I work 2 wed free sat and I gotta say always being at most 2 days away from a day off from work has been amazing. You always feel close to the weekend. Plus my Saturdays are so easy I would choose to take off any other day before taking off Saturday unless it was for a trip or I had specific plans that are on a Saturday. Sure a 3 day weekend would be amazing for mini vacations etc. But I try to see the bright side of everything and really enjoy my schedule now. Though it looks like this custom is fading away during the pandemic. But how about we stop glorifying us being model employees by showing up to work even while sick. I was at a retailer for 14 years. And I don't have enough fingers and toes to count how many times I used to see managers and supervisors dragging themselves to work while sick to please their superiors. In the 20th of January 20, I ended up getting the flu from a co-worker that decided it would impress the store manager if she still showed up while sick with the flu. That culture went away real quick when we started getting covid cases in the store I was at. And I too ended up getting a mild case of covid. I've called out any time in the past when I felt sick. And I will continue to do so as I normally did. As great as this sounds, workplaces are slowly going back to show up sick. Or at least, I've been seeing more people in my area showing up to work sick. They explain it away as it's not covered and they're okay to work. My job is doing a big project RN and has declared the next two weeks no call in week S and OFC I had gotten sick right before it was announced and was throwing up the morning of the first no call in day and had to get special permission to call in from the HR manager and still got a phone call from a supervisor chewing me out. Not to mention I'm pregnant, but they don't know that yet. Cashiers and other jobs not being allowed to sit down because it makes them look lazy. While I've got the spotlight can we do away with minimum wage shouldn't be enough to live off of too? Thanks for coming to my TED talk. These are rules made by people who sit all day. Straight up. I worked day shift at a bar and we had a stool at one end that we could sit on if needed. Most of the time I didn't use it. But we didn't have floor mats behind the bar so some days my back would really ache and I'd take a few minutes to rest in between customers. Well, one day I came in and the stool was gone. I was confused. But I didn't think much of it until one of our old, shitty, lazy, couldn't stand for 3 solid minutes if he tried regulars bragged to me about how the owner had removed the stool at his request. Because he didn't like seeing us sit down behind the bar. I had to point out to him that most bartenders get floor mats. 
And the fact that we didn't plus we worked 10 hour shifts with no breaks meant we deserved the right to sit when we got the second. He had nothing to say to that. Though it was obvious that he'd clearly never given it any thought before that moment. Edit. I was just reminded of this story. This same regular once told me that he didn't believe in floor mats. Whatever the duck that means. Because one time he saw a girl drop a pint glass on one. And it hit at the exact perfect angle to shatter and bounce back up into her face. Cutting her eye. So because of that one freak accident. No one should ever have floor mats. LOL. Worshipping celebrities. I don't get it and it seems to just create tons of problems. Kim Kardashian has 70 million Twitter followers. The number one search term on Google with regards to Kardashian is why is Kim Kardashian famous? Why indeed. Diamond rings for engagements. They are a scam. And especially the 3 month salary custom is absurd. Pretty sure the 3 month thing started as a marketing campaign by jewelers. Not in the sense of ads telling everyone that's what it should be but more like store staff being told to advise potential customers that 3 months salary was customary and what their girlfriend would be expecting. It got around and people still think that's the custom. It actually was ads telling men that. Pretty much the entire industry surrounding diamond engagement rings was a marketing ploy by De Beers. A quite interesting history of diamond rings. If you want a quick history I recommend Netflix's Explained on Diamonds. Discussing salary with co-workers should no longer be taboo edit. Thanks for the award. They don't want the workers to realize how screwed they are. If the workforce is free to discuss what they're being paid, the next thing they might decide collectively is that they want to be paid more. I'm in the public sector. Our pay grades are out there for all to see and the rare raises we get are across the board. Makes life easier. Over the top gender reveals parties. I'm European and I just don't get this gender reveal party at all. Like none of that whole thing. I had never heard of gender reveal parties until like the last 5-10 years or so. I am sure in the 80s to the early aughts they didn't exist. For what it's worth I am in New York so maybe it is a regional thing in the US. When did they become a thing? Editing to add ACC to Wikipedia. They began in the US in the late 2000s. Associating relationships with fulfillment and suffering to being single. Additionally, not referring to your spouse as a ball and chain or otherwise disparaging marriage. I have genuinely met someone and thought they were divorced because of how much they were joking about how annoying their spouse was. The whole thing is so weird. Rest being seen as lazy. If I take a day off of work simply to sleep in and rest at home instead of having to have some sort of big plans or destination it shouldn't be seen as anything less. RN I am at home. Having taken the day off because I didn't sleep well and have been napping. Couch potatoing with my doggy and doing nothing. It's great but I feel so guilty. Why? There's no good reason. Really. Other than ingrained ideas. That because someone is family, you should force yourself to spend time with them and be nice and respectful. No matter what kind of person they are or how they treat you. This goes along with the enabling acceptance of that's just how they are rather than condemning poor behavior choices. My fiancé's family are these people. They've all acted like spoiled pieces of shit multiple times over the years and have absolutely shat on my fiancé every time they do it. They stopped doing it to me early on because I refused to take their bullshit. They will all shout and scream at her about how she's got life so easy because she's in a good relationship and has a job but none of them make any effort to change their lives in any positive way. Of course once they're done shitting on her if she doesn't talk to them for a while she's the a-hole for ignoring her mother and sisters. Expensive funerals. Environment doesn't like this. Just dump me somewhere into the forest. Animals might eat it. I don't care. There are corpse farms where researchers leave bodies so that they can study what insects etc show up at what times to decompose the body. Celebrities being treated like gods and people caring about what they name their babies rather than what's being taught to their kids or what's going on in our government. People care more about the lives of strangers, celebs, influencers or any famous persona than their own lives and the people within. It's baffling and tragic. Having all the fun prints and decor and what not only for kids babies nurseries. I want a dinosaur on my pillowcase saying rah over some duck and daisies every time. You can have dinosaur sheets. 
I found these at sleep down for about 20 pounds for a king size set. My wife and I have some awesome whale sheets, a set with cool looking turtles, and we keep looking for dinosaur sheets. The fact that the coolest patterns don't exist for queen and king size beds is bullshit. Who gives a duck about giant flowers? Pants shorts without pockets. Skirts are okay in a workplace, but shorts are not. This was a pretty common business attire in Northern Australia. I don't live up there anymore so not sure if it still is. Edit. Several of my high school teachers and university lecturers would rock this look. Asking how are you today, comma, and expecting the only socially acceptable answer. Horrible. That's why I'm in the emergency room. I broke my clavicle last year into three pieces. I'm sitting in the orthopedic surgeon's office with my arm in a sling. A three long bruise on my leg, blood dripping from my ear and another bruise the size of a dinner plate on my shoulder with my arm and a sling wincing in pain every time a breeze blows. The doctor walks in how are you doing today? I simply responded well and made a Vanna White motion with my other arm like look at me. How the f do you think I am doing? That not having Facebook, Instagram, or other social media profiles is different or isolationist in some way. To add to that apparently not posting on Facebook is seen as something weird. I just use it to get in contact with people that for some reason refuse to use emails through messenger. Tipping. Jobs should pay their employees enough. In Okinawa, servers would run out the door to give you your tip back. It's essentially seen as a slap in the face to the establishment saying they can't pay their employees. Which, yep, yeah, it is. Where I live, there is no separate minimum wage for servers and restaurant workers. The industry tried for something like that, but the government realized that they'd be screwing themselves out of tax revenue. The garter tradition at weddings. I'll never unsee my brother reaching up his wife's dress in front of three generations of family. I refused to do the garter and book a toss at my wedding and my grandma did not understand my reasoning. Instead I did a thing where the couple who had been together the longest got the bouquet and so my husband's neighbors who were like 100 got it. That's very cute. May I also suggest what my wife did? She kept the bouquet and dried it. It still looks pretty. Stop questioning when we are having children. It's none of anyone's business. Asking women when they are going to have kids, implying that they are bad for not wanting them. Plus, you'll be put in awkward position when they respond they have infertility issues or recently had a loss. I never shied, shied, away from telling people the truth. This in general when you express desires not wanting any, you will change your mind. When you have one you will love them. What's the point in living if you don't bring new life blah blah bullshit. I'm glad this mindset is slowly dying and people just accept that sometimes someone just isn't keen on the idea. Plastic. Plastic everywhere. Our food wrapped in plastic. Drinks encased in plastics. Ugh. Adding to that. Wrapping bananas, oranges, mangoes and anything that has a natural protecting layer slash shell. Into plastic. Like. Why? Giving greeting cards for every single event imaginable. Why pay $5 to give someone a piece of paper that will get thrown out the next day? I'd rather you give me $5 and skip the card. You pay 5? I just go to Dollar Tree and get a nice card for a buck. Then I ride it home. 40 hour work weeks. And having to show up to the office. Only good thing that came of COVID. Don't worry, the 40 hour work week is on its way out, it's being replaced by the 60 hour work week. And the beatings will increase until morale rises. Respect your elders. I must respect the neighbor who used to beat his wife, she left, and used to beat his dog, it was taken away, and openly hates Asians. Just because he's 76 years old, I must respect him. This, respect is earned. Not given sure you have to be courteous and patient with the elderly as they may be bar sab and have difficulty processing things but if they are openly being an a-hole. That's a completely different story edit. Don't confuse respect with common courtesy. Everyone deserves to be treated like a person OFC. Making couples feel obligated to have giant, fancy, weddings. Putting the onus on the customer to tip the service staff. Especially in the US. Stop overworking the service staff. Pay them a living wage. And if a customer does want to go above and beyond to reward someone for their outstanding service, they can do so. 
but are not obligated. Whoa, you made it to the end, you're a ducking beast, I'll cut you a deal, smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh, it's free and that's a great price.